All right, we've got some new vocabulary for deductive arguments. Hooray! I bet you couldn't wait. Validity, soundness, where uh, an argument is valid or sound. We need some new vocabulary to help describe the things that we're seeing in sentences. Remember that having the vocabulary for something helps you describe it, see it, and know it. And that's why we do this at all. You all said you wanted new vocabulary, and so here comes some for you. If we take a look at deductive arguments, you'll have seen uh, lots of different kinds by now. Uh, the etymology of deductive, of course, means to lead away. And then the idea here is that you're leading away from a premise. It's as if you're leading your logic, the process of your thinking, away from some principle, belief, abstraction, definition, rule, prayer even. Uh, remember, uh, definition of horses are listed right here, though that's not a complete definition, obviously. All horses are mammals, all mammals are animals, therefore all horses are animals. The idea is that you apply the minor premise to the major premise, and then you have a new conclusion. There's nothing too spectacular about this, but when we do get deductive arguments that are spectacular, they really hit home for us. I don't know what your reaction is to the video that I had our class watch, but it, I, to my mind, it's one of those key deductive arguments that people either make and accept, or they reject, and then they feel the consequences of. Uh, remember Alan from the video? In the video, the rule was, be nice, work hard, you will do fine. Alan is nice. Alan works hard. Alan will do fine. The idea is that we're taking a close look at that rule and see how the specifics of that rule play out and what conclusions can follow from that rule or are led away from that rule once we start applying them to actual specific circumstances and people. Logic in deductive argument has to be tested and work in order for it to work. That seems self-evident, but it has to be said so that we know what it means here. We take a look at these fairly plain Jane arguments which really hinge on uh, definitions of things like horses. And look down at the bottom, it says if logical premises follow one right after another, in logical order the argument is said to be valid. All horses are mammals. Next step, all mammals are animals. Next step, therefore all horses are animals. Step, step, step. Now, of course, arguments can get a lot longer than this. Uh, we see it actually in the one that we've already taken a look at. Be nice, and then we have to have that second major premise, work hard. And then the third part of that sentence, you will do fine. The idea that Rafe Asquith communicates to his students is those three are connected. And that's part of the major premise. That can be quite complex indeed. It even can be as complex as a student slapping another student and still having him being nice and working hard which we will have talked about in class by this time. That's validity, step by step. This one step follow one right from another. And since the premise itself can be kind of nuanced or tricky, that's why we slow it down and take a close look at uh, it and see whether it's something that uh, can allow minor premises to follow straight from it. Next bullet point. If a major premise is untrue, in a deductive argument, the reasoning is invalid. The whole argument is said to be unsound. There's that soundness. If we don't accept a definition of a horse as being a mammal, right, or if the validity of the argument won't go step by step, then we've got a problem with the soundness. Soundness has a lot more to do with that premise and whether we accept it. So we take a look at this. If at any point we didn't accept the connection between being nice and working hard and you will, you will do fine for yourself, then we'd be really examining the with the careful eyes, the soundness of that first premise. Okay, so let's see if I can sum these up for you. Let me see if I can sum up this business about validity and soundness. Validity has to do with how the logical premises of a deductive argument follow one right after another in logical order. They seem to make sense because as if you're walking up a flight of steps, one step naturally leads to the next, the foundation of those steps being the major premises. The validity has to do with how those statements fit together. Step, step, step. How do they go? Soundness has to do with whether the major premises is true or warranted or accepted, and how the reasoning is also valid. So in that sense, it encompasses validity. And that's a kind of a unique definition or a definition that people won't have heard of, won't remember from a previous class, so I have to spell it out here. That means, if we're thinking about it, that soundness and sound arguments are a subset of valid arguments. You can have valid but unsound arguments, which is not meant to 
what uh, throw you uh, or confuse you. It's meant actually to say that sometimes people will accept as a major premise something that is not quite accepted or warranted at the time to see how the logic of an argument will play itself out. They'll try to test out the validity of an argument even though they may know that the major premise is not universally accepted. That's the way it was, in fact, with the Declaration of Independence and some other major documents where they were testing out the soundness and then the validity of their arguments. So, all sound arguments are valid. Not all valid arguments are sound. By the way, since I'm using Ray Basquith and the example of Alan, and that rule, be nice, work hard, good things will follow, I realize there are a lot, many other deductive arguments in the video that, uh, for the purposes, at least of this video, I'm ignoring. Uh, there are arguments made about why the students should be these things even if other people aren't being these things and how this work uh, will pay off in the future, how it creates a culture of excellence. You might notice that all of these definition or premises arguments, arguments that are deductive in nature, really focus on how the student should behave and he's trying to inculcate lots of values through them. Uh, are there shortcuts in his class? Of course not. You shouldn't take shortcuts. You kids are American, he says, and of course each kid will define that during the course of his, uh, their ex his or her experience in class, really throughout their life. He goes back to Atticus, who to him represents a deductive argument, or he gives uh, examples or uh, a instruction of delayed gratification so that students don't try to take the candy right now, they can wait until after dinner. Or that they can do this, that they are able, instead of being unable. Okay. My last question there, can you think of others? I bet you can, actually, especially from that video. Just because it's a fifth and sixth grade class does not mean that the lessons that he learned are elementary. Sometimes it actually helps to look back at the deductive arguments that you recognize going on in the videos for fifth and sixth graders, because you can see how they have played out in relief for your own colleagues and for yourself. All right. Here's some questions for you that we return to class and talk about in more detail. Logic has to be tested and work in order for it to work. Have the argument over on the left hand side or on the excuse me on the right hand side of the slide. All right, so let's see if we can figure out two questions which we'll try and answer in class. Here is the statement about logic has to be tested and work in order for the whole argument to work. Over on the right-hand side, we have the old argument that we looked at before. Be nice, work hard, you'll do fine. Alan is nice, Alan works hard, Alan will do fine. What can we conclude about this sentence? Alan did fine. Does that mean that Alan was nice? Think about that for a minute. We take a look at the argument up on the right. We see down below that Alan did fine. Does that mean necessarily that Alan was nice? If you have an answer, uh, jot it down now, uh, keep yourself honest. If you know why you have your answer, might even add that, because you have an explanation already in mind, which is good, actually. It allows you to be precise with your description. The answer here is no. Uh, and the explanation why will be what we try to tackle in the next video, but also in class. This particular argument has a problem with its validity. And we will take a look at that in more detail. Why is there a problem with the validity in this argument? Second case example. Logic has to be tested and work in order for it to work, in order for the argument to work itself. We have the same argument over on the right-hand side. Here we have the statement, Alan did not do fine. Does that mean that Alan did not work hard? Hmm, okay, different kind of question. And we're thinking about this. I want you to think about your answer. Even jot it down on that same sheet of paper. Alan did not do fine. Does that mean that Alan did not work hard? What do you think about that if we compare this argument? to the original argument. What do you think about what this says? you have your answer? Do you know why you have your answer? Yes, it does mean that, actually. Can you explain why? Again, this is an issue that hinges on the validity of an argument. This will work in part because of the validity of the argument. We're not trying to be purposely tricky here. Alan did not do fine. Therefore, cannot follow that he worked hard based on this rule that we have above. Now in class we'll answer some of these and compare our answers, but take a look at these two examples. Alan did not do fine what can be concluded, and Alan did fine what can be concluded. I've given you answers for them and I ask you to think about them 
If you don't understand them, or if you want to have more further discussion about them, let's look at them right in class and try and uh, work through the logic of the statement.